Okay. Today, I'd like to talk about the DG methods, and I would like to give a brief introduction of DG methods. The outline of this talk is given as follows. First, I will give a brief introduction about the background of discontinuous clicking method. Then, I will move on to the main part of this talk, which includes the DG method for hyperbolic conservation laws and the stability analysis and also the error estimates. Finally, is a brief summary. The motivation for studying DG methods is re relevant to the following two numerical challenges. The first one is about the discontinuity. It is well known that for time-dependent nonlinear hyperbolic conservation laws, for example, ut plus fu sub x equal to, to zero, the exact solution will always develop discontinuities as time evolves. No matter how smooth the initial condition is, this will definitely increase the difficulty in designing numerical scheme for computing uh, discontinuities. And another one uh, is about uh, multidimensional computation. To achieve expected error level, for example, of order 10 to minus 10, low order numerical methods require a greater number of cells to compute technical domain this becomes too expensive for multidimensional computations, and therefore, uh, design of high-order numerical methods is very helpful. The DG method is a Galakian method that uses discontinuous space functions for both the test functions and also the numerical solution. The DG method is also a hybrid of finite element and finite volume methods. It takes advantages of the both. Uh, advantages of both methods. There are two main features of DG method. The first one is high order accuracy, and we can obtain an arbitrary high order accuracy, accuracy approximation to the exact solution in smooth regions. Another one is high resolution property. This means that the method can produce a sharp and non-oscillatory discontinuity transitions near discontinuous solution, which includes the shocks and the contact discontinuities. To better understand these two main features of DG method, let us look at two numerical ex examples. The first one is a box equation, which is a scalar nonlinear hyperbolic conservation law, ut plus u square over 2 sub x equals 0, with initial condition 1 half plus psi x from the characteristic theory, we can see that the exact solution will develop a shock at t equal to 1. We begin with a test with shocks. We use piecewise quadratic polynomials and we compute until t equal to 1.5 when the solution has already developed a shock. We use the green solid line to denote the exact solution and the red square to denote the DG solution. From the finger, we can see that we can get a, a good approximation in smooth regions, but also we can get a, a sharp and non-oscillatory transition near the shocks, which is very nice. Next, we would consider the accuracy test. We still use DG methods with uh, piecewise quadratic polynomials but the time is 0.3. When the solution is still smooth, we consider the L2 norm and L E fitting norm of the error. From the table, we can see that they, we can achieve the expected third order, third order of accuracy. Next, we would like to consider a system case. We consider the standard a sort of problem, which is a Riemann problem, the initial condition is given as follows. We use DG methods with piecewise linear polynomials, and we compute until t equals 2. We use a thread line to denote the exact solution of the uh, equation, and we use green sign to denote the DG solution. From the finger, we can see that we can get a good approximation in smooth regions. Moreover, we can get a sharp and non-oscillatory uh, shock transitions 
uh, near discontinuities. Here is the results uh, in about pressure, which is also very nice. This demonstrates that the DD method is very useful and helpful for us to computing uh, to for computing uh, shocks. Now let me review uh, the history of DD methods. For hyperbolic problems in 1973, the DD method was first proposed by Ray and Hill in the framework of neutron transport, which is a steady-state linear hyperbolic equation. Later, in 1974, the first L2 error analysis was available by Lausanne and Rivet. From 1989, the Undercutter DD method was developed to solve nonlinear conservation law by Kukabon and Su, which used DD discretization in space and Zujukuta time discretization in time, coupled with some limiting procedure to obtain the non oscillatory property. And later, the DD method was generalized to solve convection diffusion problems which is a so-called local discontinuous Gluck method that was proposed by Kogobon and Su in 1998. There are also many other researchers in developing uh, numerical methods about DD methods in hyperbolic equations. In the meantime, the discontinuous Gluck method was proposed to solve elliptic and parabolic problems. The main class of it is the so-called interior penalty method. There are many active researchers in designing and analyzing uh, interior penalty methods for solving elliptic and parabolic equations, for example, Douglas and Dubang, Wheeler, Babshika and Suvi et al., and Brembo, Arnold, Bowman and Oden et al. for solving uh, parabolic equations. Now let me give the design of the DD scheme. We take the one-dimensional nonlinear conservation law, for example, ut plus fu sub x equals zero with x between zero to two pi. We will not pay attention to the boundary conditions, so either the periodic boundary condition or compactly supported boundary condition is considered. Like many kinds of numerical methods, the first step is to partition the domain. We would like to use the following mesh to cover the domain i, which is 0 to 2 pi, and we denote the cell center and the cell length by xj and hj as zero, and we also use h to denote the maximum length of hj. The next step is to get the so called weak formulation. To do that, we need to multiply the equation and the exact and the initial condition by arbitrary smooth functions v and w and integrate on cell ij after using integration by parts we get the so-called weak formulation note this is still an infinite infinite dimensional problems and we need to choose some uh, finite element space which typically is chosen as piecewise polynomials the next step is to get the DD scheme. To do that, we need to replace uh, in the weak formulation, replace u by the by the numerical solution uh and the test function v by uh, the test function vh. However, since we, we are considering DD methods, and thus your numerical solution uh may be discontinuous at the cell boundaries, so we need, we need to pay special attention about the boundary terms. And uh as j plus one half doesn't make sense if uh is discontinuous. And thus we would like to introduce the so-called numerical flux f hat j plus one half to replace the boundary values of f. And for the choice of the test functions, we take the value always inside of the interval. That is for the right end point of ij, namely xj plus one half, we choose the left limit. And for the left end point of 
vh at ij which we take the right limit and for the initial discretization by the weak formulation and the definition of l2 production we can see that the initial discretization u at zero is nothing but the standard l2 production of u zero we note that the, the weak formulation holds for any test functions and for every j for nonlinear hyperbolic equations, uh, generally the model to numerical flux is chosen, which is a single valued function that depends on uh minus and uh plus from different sides of the boundary. And the numerical flux should model to numerical flux should satisfy the following three uh, properties. The first one is the consistency, that is that is if u minus equals u plus equals u then f hat u u is identically f u for the second uh, property it is a uh, Lipschitz continuity that is a numerical flux function f hat it is at least Lipschitz continuous with respect to its both arguments the last one is so called monotonicity that is a numerical flux function f hat is a non decreasing function with respect to its first argument and it is a non-increasing function with respect to the second element. This is very important for us to prove for the L2 stability, which can be seen later. Now, I would like to summarize the DD algorithm for the semi-discretized version. In each cell IJ, we choose base functions phi JL, then the DD solution UHXT can be expressed in terms of phi JL with unknowns UJL T in each cell. Then we take care of the numerical flux f hat, which is a single value function that depends on UH minus and UH plus on, at each boundary. We need also to take care of the integral term, which can be computed by either numerical quadrature or quadrature free method that is depending on the problem that we solve. Next, we take the test functions vh equals phi j m x and compute the inverse of the mass matrix, which is a local k plus 1 times k plus 1 matrix. And therefore, we arrive at the following uh, ODE system with unknowns uj. Uh, uj is a vector that is uj equals uj0 to ujk and L denotes the DG spatial discretization operator, which is usually nonlinear. Before going to Im implementation, some suitable time discretization can be used. A popular one is the so-called third order explicit division Yukuta time discretization that was proposed by Su and Osa in 1998. We note that this third order TVD Zonu Kuta method is a convex combination of the so called Euler forward. And we also note that any method of lines time stepping method can be used with a semi discretized uh, DD scheme. And the third order TVD scheme is only a choice. Next, we would like to uh, discuss the stability issue of the DD scheme. Before presenting the L2 stability result, let us first emphasize the importance of the stability property. Because any scheme without the stability property may be a bad scheme, which can blow up at a later time. And since we consider the periodic or compactly supported boundary conditions, the L2 stability uh, is implies that the DD solution UH with the monotone numerical flux satisfy the following L2 stability property. Here, an unmarked norm is a so-called standard L2 norm. This means that the L2 norm of UH at a later time t can be bounded by the initial discretization. We would like to remark that it is very difficult for us to prove nonlinear stability for finite difference or finite volume scheme. However, it is quite straightforward for us to obtain the nonlinear stability for 
DD methods for solving nonlinear hyperbolic conservation laws. Although the L2 stability can be uh, obtained for general multi dimensional uh, nonlinear conservation law with um, any triangulations, here for simplicity, we only consider one dimensional scalar conservation law. And we would like to present the detailed proof of the L2 stability. Since the DD scheme holds for any test function VH in VHK, we take VH equals UH in our DD scheme to get this identity. Note that the first term is about the energy term of UH, and the second term is an integral term, which is denoted by Ti. The last two terms are the so-called boundary terms that it depends on the numerical flux. The main idea is to switch the integral term to, uh, to be expressed to some boundary terms. To do that, we need to denote f tilde u to, to be the primal function of f u. Then by chain rule, the spatial derivative of f tilde u h is nothing but f u h times u h sub x. And therefore, the integral term ti is identically the integral of f tilde uh sub x. And therefore, if we use newton leibniz formula, the integral term ti can be expressed by some boundary terms. That is, ti equals minus f tilde of uh evaluated at xj plus half minus plus f tilde of uh evaluated at xj minus half plus. Next, we need to sum all these boundary conditions and also the first energy term to obtain the following inequality. Again, the first term is the so-called energy term, and the second term is a combination of some boundary terms. Here, we have used a double square bracket to denote the jump of the function at a discontinuity point. And this boundary terms are the so-called numerical viscosity provided by the numerical flux f hat. In what follows, we shall prove that this boundary term is non-negative, and thus the L2 stability result will follow. We begin with mean value theorem to express the jump of f tilde uh in terms of f tilde prime s times the jump of uh, here s between uh minus and uh plus. Then we can use fundamental theorem of calculus, that is, f tilde prime s is identically fs since f tilde is a prime function of s. Next, we can use the consistency of numerical flux, that is, f hat ss is fs, and we note that f hat is a numerical function, numerical flux function, which is a single value function that depends on uh minus and uh plus. To verify that this boundary term is non negative without loss of generality, we consider uh, the case uh minus less than or equal to uh plus. And we should use the monotonicity of the flux function. That is, f hat is a, is a non decreasing function with respect to its first argument, and it is a non increasing function with, re with respect to its second argument. To do that, we need also to add and subtract a term, that is, f hat s uh plus. And we need to verify that each factor on this multiplication is non negative. For the first term, we can see that if we use the if if we use the, that the numerical flux function f hat is a non increasing function with respect to its second argument and s is less than or equal to uh plus and therefore f hat s s minus f hat s u h plus is non negative. Similarly we can use that the numerical flux function is non-decreasing function with respect to the first argument, and that s is greater than or equal to uh minus, and thus the second term is also non-negative. For the jump of uh 
it is uh, quite uh, obvious that the jump of UH is also non-negative, and therefore this boundary term is non-negative. And thus, the L2, the L2 stability result follows. Next, we, I would like to move on about the error estimates. Although the error estimates can be performed for general nonlinear hyperbolic conservation laws in multidimensional case with any triangulations, here for simplicity, we will only consider the linear hyperbolic conservation law ut plus u sub x equal to zero. And I will give a brief framework about the error analysis. First of all, we should pay attention to the so-called digit scheme because for the linear conservation law, we can choose the upper wind flux, that is uh hat equals uh minus, and we would like to denote hj to be the digit discretization operator, that is hj is, can be given as follows, which depends on the choice of numerical flux. And therefore, the digit scheme can be written in this form, which holds for any test function VH in VHK. Note that the DG discretization operator HJ is bilinear, bilinear with respect to its both arguments. Next, since the exact solution U also satisfies the weak formulation, if we compare, compare with the weak formulation for the DG solution UH, and use the linearity of HJ with respect to its first argument, then we would get the so-called error equation, and we have denoted E to be the error between the exact solution U and the DD solution UH, and note that here the error equation holds for any test function VH in VHK. However, E doesn't belong to VHK, so following the standard analysis in find element, we need to split the error E into two parts by choosing some suitable projection that will be specified later. And thus, the error E is split into two ter terms. One is the so-called projection error, which is denoted by eta, and another term is denoted by C that belong to VHK. And therefore, we have that the integral of ET times VH equals H eta VH plus H C VH and this holds for any test functions VH in VHK. Next, we would like to take VH equals C and therefore we have the Foley identity. Note that on the left hand side it involves the energy term and the projection term on the right hand side, we have two terms that need to be bounded. The first, the, these two terms will be estimated separately. Unfortunately, H C C C has already been given in our stability analysis. That is, H C C C C for the linear case equals minus one half times the summation of square of jump of C C at each boundary, which is definitely less than or equal to zero. Note again that this term is a so-called numerical viscosity resulting from the upper wind flux u at head equals u at minus. Uh, for the estimate of h eta c, we note that it depends heavily on the choice of pH minus, and in the best case, we would have f eta c equals zero and that, and by using Gromwell inequality, we can get an optimal convergence order of C by using the approximation theory about the eta, and triangle inequality, we can get the expected optimal k plus one third order of accuracy for E. Now we need to pay special attention about the local projections pH minus U. By local projection, we mean that for any given function U, the projection pH minus can be locally solved in each cell IJ. And the definition of pH minus U is given as follows. 
for any plane function u that may be discontinuous at several boundaries, the projection pH minus u satisfies that the projection error u minus pH minus u is orthogonal to any polynomials of degree k minus 1. And also, we require that u minus equals pH minus u minus at a vanilla boundary point. Note that this kind of definition of projection will completely eliminate the projection error in H eta VH. That is because by using the definition of eta H eta V, it only involves two, term, two terms. One is the so-called uh, integral term, and another one is the boundary term. Let us look at the integral term first. Since the integral term only involves eta times the pro piecewise polynomials of degree k minus 1, and if we use the orthogonality of projection with respect to piecewise polynomials of degree k minus 1, we can see that this integral term is identically zero. For the boundary term, we can use the exact collocation at one of the boundary point. We can see that eta minus is also one. And therefore, at eta vh is identically zero, which holds for any test function vh in vhk. And it is well known that by standard approximation theory, for example, by Mohippert lemma, the optimal approximation properties holds. That is, the actual norm of the projection error can be bounded by ch to the power k plus 1 times the sublift norm of u, provided that the, solution, the exact solution u is smooth, sufficiently smooth. Next, I would like to review some incomplete convergence results of DD methods for solving hyperbolic equations. We begin with first order hyperbolic equation. If the purely upwind flux are used for some spatial meshes, optimal k plus 1's order can be proved theoretically, and this includes the linear steady state case and also the nonlinear time dependent problems. Uh, coupled with third order and second order explicit uh, TVD zone you call a time discretization. And if the not purely upwind of numerical flux is, are considered, only suboptimal k plus one half order can be proved. And this includes the nonlinear conservation laws with the general uh, monotone fluxes and also the linear hyperbolic system with the general stabilized fluxes and also any other works. Now let us consider the second order hyperbolic equation. For this case, the situation is a little bit different. That is, for most of the cases, optimal k plus 1's order can be proved theoretically. This includes the interior penalty DG methods with not purely upwind fluxes and also the local discontinuous Galkin methods coupled with alternating fluxes. Now I will give a brief summary of this talk. We have discussed a brief uh, instruction of DG methods for solving hyperbolic conservation laws. The nonlinear stability and convergence results can be easily proved. And from the analysis, we can see that the numerical flux should be carefully chosen to guarantee the stability of the DG scheme. And also, suitable projections should be designed to obtain error estimates and the convergence order depends heavily on the choice of numerical fluxes and projections. Thank you.